You're listening to the Classic Gamers Guild Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Classic Gamers Guild Podcast. It has been a little while since we've been around. We really, really apologize for that. Unfortunately, situations out of our control um, just made it impossible for any of us to get anything done the last couple weeks. Uh, we'll spare you the details, but we are back, and we are glad to be back. Um, w- two of us survived. One of us hasn't made it. Ho- hopefully, Paul will resurface eventually, but at least I have Anna here. Anna, how are you doing? Oh, I'm pretty good. You gave it away. I was going to go with the British accent and see if I could trick people. I, I I could still edit it if you want to give that a try. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. And I'm great, Rick. Thanks okay. for asking. <laughs> What's new with you? It's been like three weeks or something. Any um any gaming, any new uh acquisitions? Yeah, I've been knee deep in Willie Beamish. I'm playing through it with my son and we're doing it straight up with no hints and no walkthroughs at this point. Brave. And, uh, is it um <laughs> is is it a um uh, I know I know it's dynamics. Mm-hmm. Um is it lots of deaths and dead ends or is it pretty uh pretty smooth going lots of deaths and dead ends but it clearly leads you being that it's a text parser game into what like oh that didn't work and i died so hopefully you saved it you can restore and try one of the other options but yeah there's ways to die all over the place it's great and and sometimes super unexpected a lot of people i think say that the game is awfully unfair but as long as you're saving regularly it's fine did you say it's a text parser game no uh point and click oh okay you can edit i'm pretty sure you said text parser but (laughs) i uh, might have yeah all right uh, okay, so it's a point-and-click game. That's what I thought. Um, but it's a little bit weird to hear that um, Willie Beamish has a lot of deaths in that game. I mean, that seems a little <laughs> bit uh, cruel. Well, okay, not deaths. <laughs> 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 You get sent to military school, you know, oh, or you end up getting you know, beat up and you have broken arms and legs yeah. and then you're sent to military okay, school. Okay, that, that, that's sounding a bit more familiar to me. I think one of you or Paul uh, mentioned that at some point, but I just, I never played it, so I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember very much these days. I think I have like early onset dementia or something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, okay, so that's, there's game over states, but I, I was referring to like deaths, like literally. Um, no, just, so just grievous injuries but no like i guess i generically put all end games into the title deaths at, which at i which top. i totally understand <laughs> and uh that was kind of uh um my fault for being quite so semantic about <laughs> death <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's a funny game it's it's kind of rude it's, and jacob is certainly enjoying it awesome any any new additions to your collection uh, a few. Okay, I got a game called The X Experiment, which is a small box, and it comes with sort of like a little, the front folds out and it's almost like a little magazine thing. Anyways, it's a very pretty small box. I've never heard of the game, but it's an adventure kind of a mm. horror game, as well as uh, I got Lost Crown, which is another adventure style kind of a game in a small box from back in the day, but they're very pretty boxes. Are they uh, thrift finds or used game store finds? thrift finds those thrift two finds wow nice yeah it's uh, you know what while they're open i'm gonna go there and and see what they have because you never know when they're <laughs> right gonna now? get pulled out from underneath me <laughs> yeah, like, like right now if they were open but they're closed which is okay. why i'm here you see okay perfect yeah i've um I, I've, I don't think i've mentioned on the uh air before but i've pretty much uh uh have pretty much curbed my collection at this point i think i don't really have any space I've got pretty much everything I need. Thrift stores around here suck for mm-hmm. game collectors. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm really kind of... Um, on one hand, I don't really have a lot of opportunity to collect if I wanted to. And I kind of don't even really want to. So I've got <laughs> nothing new to add. I don't think I've added a single thing to my collection um, in months, possibly. So oh, wow. yeah, nothing new on that. No gaming really um i've just been doing brain dead gaming you know when you just sort of uh, uh I, I just sit down a couple evenings and just play wwe for a while mm-hmm. uh just to 
some I don't know, do something, I guess, but uh because I need something that doesn't take any brain power. Yeah, um, I've been feeling that way about gaming too. I keep sitting there and thinking, like, what can I play that I don't have to actually actively play? But yeah. I wanna play it. <laughs> yeah, it's like passive active playing. Like you have to actively <laughs> play it, obviously. But it's almost kind of a passive state where you just kind of like just button mash until somebody wins or loses. And I don't even care at this point anymore. Exactly. I feel that so much right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but speaking of brain power and uh, possibly also in the topic of brain dead, um, <laughs> you know, everyone talks about, you know, obviously we on the show are big adventure game fans. And uh, usually that comes down to the big two uh, when it comes to the classics. That's Sarah and LucasArts. And um, uh, there is something to be said for Westwood, who uh, went for quality over quantity. They just pretty much did the Corandia series. Um, I think they did one other game before that, and then they followed up with Blade Runner. So uh, I haven't really played Corandia myself. It looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like it. Uh, I played a bit of the first one. I got to that stupid fireberry maze and just gave up after that. So uh, oh, people said, yeah, uh, people said that it was great though. So I'll just take their word for it. Um, and of course, Blade Runner, we've talked about on the show. It's a, mm -hmm. that, that's a great one. A lot of people say that's one of the best. Um, I, I'm sure there are people who actually say that is the best point and click. Uh, and they'd have an argument there. Mm-hmm. So that's Westwood. Uh, if you want to go for an outlier in the point and click genre or the adventure game genre, more specifically, people don't really talk about the efforts that were made by accolade into the genre. Um, and I think having played less manly in search of the King, uh, for the first time a couple years ago, but I always knew of it. It was always around. I read the magazines back in the day, uh, so I knew that Less Manly existed. I, I can see why they're not really in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, there are good things about it, too. Like, good aspects of it, even if the overall structure kind of just falls flat. Um, but, yeah, that's what we'll talk about. So, first of all, uh, when did you play... Less Manly in Search of the King. My dad came across a, a copy of this game. I, I, I seem to remember having a big box because I, I remember it having like this little, uh, uh, like these glasses you had to put on and they would reveal these answers to a question that it would sort of randomly ask you about how tools go together throughout the game. So I'm pretty sure I had the whole big box. I think about 1994. And I was stoked because I liked the humor of Space Quest and Leisure Suit Larry. So to get a game like this, I thought it would have just fit right into uh, into that. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually, I actually decided to look it up. I wanted to see what is inside. I, I can't attest to the completion of this particular lot on eBay, but they say it's complete. I do not see glasses here. But that's oh. not to say that they don't exist. I remember them being like a reveal for you to like pass the, I remember having to reveal something or another. For um, like, it's, it's oh, copy protection. It'll you know come what? up like yeah, super yeah. random. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I, that eBay listing either is not actually complete or they're not showing everything. But I looked on Google image search and yeah, there's, um, there's glasses with the red and the, uh, you know, back in the day they had the red decoder mm -hmm. on everything. Um, apparently a special edition of National Enquirer. Uh, yeah, I remember a magazine and, and I think some versions came with a hint book, but whatever my dad came home with, there was no hint book in it. So I never had that. And I should point out that the reason why this National Enquirer special is because it's National Inquirer <laughs> and not the National Enquirer. <laughs> so um, looking at the box here, because I know you don't really have this one yet. No, I have um, the box for the second one, but different mm -hmm. feelies. Uh, yeah, it's, eh, I don't know, it's an okay box. The The back is where it gives its tagline, want more, get less. <laughs> um, which probably sounded um, a little bit more personal, but less accurate than, are you looking for Leisure Suit Larry? We're not that, but buy us anyway. 
Well, you know, there was one thing that this game kind of alluded to having that I thought there would have been more of, and that was sex and nudity. You get your beautiful girls, you get like a nipple, it warns you it's going to happen. And it's not like that, but it doesn't, doesn't give you any more than that. And let's be clear here. When we say nip- nipple, it's like under the shirt nipple. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not, we're, we're not talking like actual anything naked. I mean, yeah, they're, they yeah. look nice. There's one naked at, near the beginning, right right before when you go in before you steal the dream and, and you're looking at his dream. If you look at the oh, dream, hang on. he'll We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. To, to uh, save that yeah. one. But, yeah. uh, but anyways, okay, there is a there beauty. Actual, was there, there actual? Was nip- there was nipples okay. for sure. 100%. Okay. I, I don't remember that, but I'll take your word for it. Well, I, I don't I don't particularly remember that. I, I do know that there was um, uh, some really good graphics um, mm-hmm. for the especially The backgrounds this. were gorgeous, so bright and vibrant. I yeah, loved them. But this wasn't EGA, was it? Like, this was... It had I, 16 I hesitate to say, colors. Was it, really? Well, unless you played it on Amiga, and then it had 32. Right. No, mm-hmm. it wouldn't have been. No. Um, so then, you, yeah, you've got it. You can even see side by side comparisons. It'll show it on like the PC versus the Amiga, and it's definitely lacking a bit of shading. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I I will say if because I'm a little, I'm a little bit confused because yeah, I, when I played it, I was um, and right up until now, I assumed it was EGA just by the graphical style, uh, but I hesitated just because it's for EGA. I really got to give it this. They really. Um, got a lot of mileage out of EGA. Mm-hmm. So give it, I'll give it credit for that. The graphics are good mm-hmm. uh, for its time. Uh, just looking at some screenshots now and yeah, I mean like this is, uh, uh, I can't remember if Paul asked me this on the air or not, but he did ask me about like, oh, was there ever a game that felt like VGA being crammed into EGA? Um mm-hmm. And I couldn't really think of anything at the time, but I think this would probably be my pick for that because it does, it is EGA, but it does actually kind of pass off as not full on VGA for sure, but it does pass off as a little bit more than EGA. So I'm kind of impressed by that. And a lot of scenes. I think there's at least like 50 different places you get to go to. And I mean, I love I love the circus. I thought it was just so cool to be able to go into an old time uh freak show kind of circus Mm -hmm. although there is something to be said for a little bit of the inconsistency there are some scenes in here that look not good (laughs) but uh, there are some that actually do look pretty great it's kind of like willie beamish in that way when i'm playing it and they're most of the scenes the background renderings are amazing but when they're doing the little animated sprite that's doing things kind of in the background or off in the other room it's like one eye is big and blotchy the other eye is small and it just it mm-hmm. doesn't work quite as well and i guess a part of that's the size of the pixels they're dealing with yeah probably something like that like if if anyone were to look this up on google and to sort of follow along with us you know going through google limit search a little bit further down the page there's um a picture of less manly dressed as Elvis standing in front of Red's bar and grill. And that is sort of, again, it, it looks like EGA, but also mm-hmm. hard to believe it's just EGA. Well, um, some of the images you're seeing might be the Amiga and might have those extra colors. That in it is too. also a good point. Mm-hmm. And I cannot confirm nor deny that, but that is definitely a possibility because you did mention the 32 colors potentially. Yeah. Cause then you'd get way more dithering. Uh, so they, maybe that's what's throwing me off because I always mm-hmm. just thought EGA. I never questioned it until now. And now that I look at some of these screenshots, some of them look better. So that's probably it. It's probably uh, Amiga shots where they were allowed a little bit more color. Mm-hmm. Um, so either way, the graphics are pretty good. Uh, I even remember being impressed by them when I first played it to a certain degree. I thought, mm-hmm. you know, the graphics were good, but there was something... That didn't quite have the charm of a Sierra or LucasArts adventure. Well, know. part of it was personality to me. I mean, he got kind of more personality as the game progressed, but mm-hmm. uh, it was missing a little bit of that uh, je ne sais quoi. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I-, I wouldn't say that Les Manley didn't have the personality. I'd say the game didn't really have the personality, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. 
And, well, he um, did get more of one as it went on, but at the beginning, he was having a bit of a hard time finding who he was, I think. Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess that kind of is tonally consistent with the story of the game. Mm-hmm. With story, which involves a hell of a lot of backtracking. I mean, it's to me, it's like it's a really linear game and everything follows the next step. But you, you have to really kind of figure it out, go back, figure it out, go back. And there's no obvious clues as to what to click on or where. And, and I mean, yes. the mouse is only about as useful as it is in, in King's Quest IV. It's mm-hmm. it's there and you can use it and you can point on stuff. But really, the text parser is, is what you're working with. And so... If anyone's ever played or even looked at this game or anything about this game, no one will ever have any doubt that this was completely, um, let's say, inspired by Sierra. I mean, th- <laughs> yeah. there is no question where this draws its inspiration from. But to confirm that, it is actually pretty official, at least as far as Wikipedia is concerned, that uh, Steve Cartwright did develop the engine uh Pretty much to mimic Sierra. Like, is he was inspired by Sierra's achievements. I'm reading this quote unquote. These mm-hmm. are not my words. Uh, inspired by Sierra's achievements in adventure game engine programming, and um, he created similar and hopefully superior tools. Hmm. Um, and if you've played this or uh, another one they did was Altered Destiny, mm-hmm. you can very clearly see that, um, that that they're really going for a Sierra type of game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As compared to like, say for example, he did hackers one and hackers two. It is a completely different principle. Mm-hmm. You're trying to like control and hack a computer system. That's all robotic. And yeah. You know. But, but the, um, uh, I, I guess one of the, for better or worse, but actually I, I think for worse, he also decided to steal the, um, or not steal, but, I think he was also inspired by the incredible moon logic puzzle (laughs) design of Sierra games, which granted, you know, everyone makes fun of Sierra games for their moon logic puzzles. And sure, I'll give them that a lot of times it can be pretty out there. Yeah. When, when they decided to sort of be like, uh, surpass Sierra, uh, they really took that one a little bit far. (laughs) Uh, we, we, you mentioned, well, okay, one of the puzzles was that you have to uh, take a sleeping guard's dreams. <laughs> and this is something which just is not, as far as I knew, was not in any way alluded to as being like a possibility or anything that you would need later on. And the w- the w- what this puzzle is that you come across a, a security guard who's sleeping and you see the little um, thought balloon above his head and you see the things that he's dreaming of. And I think there's like even a Leisure Suit Larry reference in amongst mm-hmm. that. Yeah. As if they weren't obvious enough where um, <laughs> where this game was taking some of its inspirations from. <laughs> but you have to just sort of randomly decide, hey, that's a thing there. Why don't I take that and put it in my pocket? Because <laughs> that's what you do when you see somebody dreaming. You decide you're going to take their dreams as an inventory item. Yeah, it's that's the kind of lateral thinking that makes a person put the game away and never play it again because they think it's impossible to complete. Yeah, I, I mean, I appreciate. I mean, I, I get a good chuckle out of it. Like, I get a good laugh out of it that they actually had the guts to do something like that. But it does not make for a very fun game experience. It's one of those things you just have to shake your head and laugh at, and <laughs> just be glad that you could at least laugh. Um, and the reason why it's a puzzle is that you come later on come across a uh, a little uh, circus performer. I do mean a little <laughs> yeah, circus little, performer, little. <laughs> and you have to give him dreams because that's <laughs> a thing that you're supposed to just sort of decide is what's wanted here. So you give him this guy's, a sleeping security guard's dreams. Which is great, because when you do that, you're able to mail him where he needs to go so that you can use him to do tiny people things. So, yeah, yeah that works. <laughs> Cause and effect, everything. You see your goal, and you work backwards from uh, there. It's funny, you know, this game did it did at least one fourth wall break. I don't know if, if you recall the part where you're you end up in the desert after the strongman 
kind of bops you out there. And then Stella calls you up and she's like, Oh, I just, I thought I'd call you here because I wanted them to show another picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was a couple of years ago when I played it. So fairly recently, but a lot of details I kind of missed because I swear by that point of the game, I was really just trying to get it done. I was just <laughs> full on walkthrough. Like, I wouldn't have even made it that far if not for the walkthrough. Um, <laughs> but I was just full on just wanted to see the end just so I could scratch it off the list. Altered Destiny was the same way. Maybe we'll talk about that one of these days. But it was just, I don't know. I've heard people at some point say like, oh, uh, Altered Destiny was too easy. But I'm like, bull crap. Like, no way. Um, I tried playing that game so many times because that was one of the games I actually had when I was younger. <laughs> and I just couldn't even do it. I couldn't figure anything out. I actually stopped playing that game, which says so much about, you know, you know, those are the days where any game, you just play it because it's a game. Right? Yeah, that's exactly why I played this one. And, and uh, truth be told, I didn't finish it. I guess mm -hmm. I didn't understand the concept of get dream. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably what it was. I just, I remember doing a bunch of stuff and walking around and think it was cool when I was younger that I'm just like, ah, oh, crap, I can't get anywhere. It wasn't until I was older and I had access yeah. to walkthroughs that I was able to finish it. Yeah, and you would just give up. I, I would totally have played maybe like the first 20 minutes of this game mm -hmm. and then just not, <laughs> you know, if I, even if I were younger. Mm -hmm. and, and like you said, the only reason I would get through it now or had any like desire to get through it now is because of walkthroughs. <laughs> that's almost kind of why uh i almost kind of like lost in la a little bit because they kind of curbed that a little you know you could actually just get through the game eventually just by doing stuff because they went to the point and click format mm -hmm. um but we won't get too much into that one because i haven't played at all but lost in la was yeah it was a little bit off um I, I didn't, it, it's a little bit less endearing, but again, like I said, the game design uh, mechanically was a little bit better and more accessible. It's like a, a cross between uh, Freddy Farkas and an FMV game to me. Yeah, pretty close. I mean, like, <laughs> it really captured that mid-90s look. Mm -hmm. um, so on a certain gameplay level, I kind of like Lost in LA a little bit better. But Search of the King, uh, in terms of story and character, definitely a bit better. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. We're, we're, I'm really just reaching for the positives here. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, I found a, a dossier on this fellow while I was searching around on him. And uh, you, did you know that his favorite movie is Little Mermaid? I did not know this. <laughs> <laughs> Little tidbit of information I thought you'd want to hear. And I'm curious how this, uh, how they figured that that kind of played into his personality. I don't know. I found it in an article from uh, back when it first came out and they had this, it's time to meet less and they had some interviews in it. So I'm guessing it might have come from the game designers. Maybe, I guess. <laughs> I, I could see his favorite movie being something like Splash. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> his exercise drinks protein powder. <laughs> Hey, I can do that too. <laughs> but yeah, I've never actually seen the uh, the hint book for this game in real life. It would be mm -hmm. kind of cool to get a hold of a copy of that just just because. You, you know, it says something too, because you said that even you didn't finish this game when you were younger. And you've played through a lot of games without walkthroughs mm -hmm. that I did not think was possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, I, I guess you just... Um, I, either you are far more clever than I am, which is totally not out of the realm of possibility <laughs> or you just like somehow managed to muscle through and just brute force your way through puzzles but um <laughs> probably a bit of both but so to hear you say that even you couldn't get through this that that says a lot to me because you did far better at these old school games than i did well, my dad would always try to help where he could and he tried to help with this one too but he couldn't really get into it either he just <sighs> I don't know. It was, it was good. I think if it had tried to be itself, it might have mm. been better. I yeah. mean, I had too much expectation going into it. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Like, uh, like I said, we 
we can really, it's not written anywhere that I've ever known where this is supposed to be uh, their answer to Leisure Suit Larry, but I think it's pretty clear that this is supposed to be their answer to Leisure Suit Larry. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they've really made that a subtle point. Um, (laughs) You know, and by all right and reason, they could, you know, the designers of the game could deny that fact because there's nothing that says that that was absolutely the case as far as Mm -hmm. I've ever seen. But I'm pretty sure if they said that, most people would just sort of like cock their head and like uh, <laughs> look at them with a puzzled expression, uh, with just like seriously, you're, you're you're going you're sticking to that story. But um, I I don't know if they would or wouldn't admit to this being a huge just very kind of wannabe. But it didn't have to be, is the thing, because it's not. Even- it has enough story to be its own, like the search for the king, the hot chicks. Mm-hmm. It has enough. It just it could have been, it could have been something more. And I think by trying to jump in, on, I guess they must have been trying to jump in on the marketing. It was big money back then. It was a whole different world. It's kind of even hard to comprehend what they'd be going for. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also, I remember it coming on a bunch of discs. I think it had like five discs. So I remember there was a lot of switching and a lot of loading time. And it was kind of like a long loading time. I remember it feeling really long when right. I played it. <laughs> wait, wait, was this on your uh, monochrome? Mm. Probably by 94, we had two. We had the monochrome still running, but it was moved into my dad's room in the office, had a mm-hmm. color monitor. So it's kind of a crapshoot. Okay. Could have been either. I'm, I'm guessing it probably wouldn't have been, but I don't know. There are some um, there are some EGA games that worked in the monochrome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I played Space Quest 3 on the monochrome. So mm. um, it's definitely possible. But, no, I, but you're right because... You know, this could have actually been a pretty fun game because the story is fun. Mm-hmm. Um, the actual story. And even the stupid things like getting the dream, giving it to the guy to give him dreams. Um, that's something that really could have worked in their favor with just this like quirky, weird logic if they had just made it a little bit more obvious that that's what you needed to do. Well, the whole game was a little bit like that. I mean, it didn't point you directly although it was linear like i said earlier it didn't really point you in the correct direction Mm -hmm. now i'm not sure if there was any moment where somebody said you know maybe if you said the right thing and talked to the little guy um helmet i think his name Mm is Uh, i think maybe if you like asked him something he'd be like man, I really need bigger dreams or something like that. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if they did or didn't do that because that, that, that was pretty early in the game and already I was just giving up and doing walkthroughs. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's like, I, I don't really see any way myself. Like, as I'm walking through this, I'm not thinking to myself, yeah. oh, that would have made sense if I had actually <laughs> given it a second thought. So, yeah. but I do admire, like, the... the um the quirkiness of having to take someone's dream and give it to somebody and then mail them away. But uh, I, I think the actual design of those puzzles, if they kind of work those a lot smoother, this could have been a much better game. It's the kind of puzzle you come up with when you're doing LSD. You're like, dude, <laughs> imagine if you could like take his dream and then like give it to somebody who didn't <laughs> have one later. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I can't imagine coming up with that straight. I just can't. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Just feel yeah, just like totally tripping balls, just being like, <laughs> you dude, you know what? You need to dream bigger. So I'm gonna like <laughs> bros passed out next to me. I'm gonna take his dream. I'm giving it to you, man, okay? Now you take that dream and you run with it. And then like at some point wake up and just be like, Hey, you know what? I, I'm going to put that into this game because it really happened. <laughs> yeah, this is how I came up with the idea for this game. This is like full <laughs> circle, man. This is wicked. Write what you know. I don't know. It's It it, it does have a little bit of a similarity to the uh, original Monkey Island, I think. Just in the really? sort of... I think so. Like, maybe in the, ah, in the menus. Explain this one to me. Well, maybe not. Maybe you can leave that out. I don't know if I can back that one up. 
I mean, it, I, I'm not like debating it. I'm not saying I'm not trying to shoot that down. I'm just um, that's an interesting comparison that I just would what like to know more about. Yeah, I guess I was thinking about looks, like in backgrounds and stuff. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, not like in actual gameplay. I mean, yeah, I'm trying to think of any sort of uh, um, a anything in comparison <laughs> to this game, like, other than just like you know the obvious bite offs, but the. Uh, well, it's hard to compare is... it as a game to any other game. It's not. It came out at the same time as stuff like Codena Codename Iceman, uh, Manhunter, Early Leisure Suit Larry, but I can't like place it in the bucket with any one of those, really. Because I, I think I got this game right around the same time I got Space Quest Four. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. But my timelines, like I said, they're off because of the random times of people would give me games. So it's, it's just... never really when it first comes out. <laughs> no, exactly. Especially for most people, uh, especially mm -hmm. for, you know, for me, a lot, most of the games were like years after the fact. So if you got this around the same time as Space Quest 4, it probably came out, I'm going to guess, you know, 1990. Mm -hmm. What would that be like Space Quest 3 era? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, 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 I know Heroes Quest 1 was already out by, by 1990. Mm -hmm. um, Space Quest 1 is 86 so uh, oh wait sorry I wasn't looking at Space Space Quest 3 was 89 as well Yeah. so this yeah. would have been right around there so they yeah, yeah it definitely looks like it could have come after because it does graphically look a little bit more um, um, impressive but again mm -hmm. you know you, you talk about graphics versus art Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the graphics definitely are more advanced in Less Manly, but I'll take the art of uh, Space Quest 3 or Quest for Glory any day. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's simpler. Like, yeah. uh, to me, I think I said it in another podcast episode, and and I don't mean to completely disrespect this game, but I've always thought, even as a kid of Less Manly, as the Kmart version of Leisure Suit Larry. Yes. Yeah. It's like you can get it and it's fine and the pattern's pretty much the same. The material might not be as high of quality and it, it might not <laughs> last as long, but it's cheaper and it's useful for now. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because you, you always use the term Kmart and I always say uh, dollar store. But it's basically <laughs> the same concept, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but uh, but um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess I'm going to say go back to the whole graphics versus art thing. It's a little bit. Uh, too obvious to compare it against like Quest for Glory, which was like amazing, and Space Quest which is amazing. But I would take AGI graphics over mm -hmm. the better graphics of uh, Less Manly because the AGI art is just so amazing, even despite like the limitations, mm -hmm. right? But just the art is fantastic, even in the AGI era. And this one, yeah, the uh, graphics are good and uh, technically superior, but the art just isn't there mm -hmm. well, you know what else isn't there any actual elvis music because of course accolade didn't want to fork well, over the not. cash to have any <laughs> rights to real elvis songs <laughs> yeah actually did i um did i read or am i mistaken i might have read this a while back that uh um do they ever actually call him elvis like i think they could only call him the king yeah i think they could only call him the king mm -hmm. So I yeah I got I I don't remember at this point by a first hand account because it was a couple of years ago and I wasn't even paying attention, but um yeah it, it would make sense for sure if they weren't actually able to say Elvis. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder That's if funny. I can find that again, but uh... it just it amuses me how far you're allowed to go into copyright territory without <laughs> actually taking a bite out of the copyright apple. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, wow, okay, so you can buy them, the Less Manly game, separately or in a bundle on GOG. Mm -hmm. If you buy them both, it's about 12 bucks Canadian, so I'm going to guess probably about, like, 2 bucks American. <laughs> if that. Um, yeah. uh, I, I, would, I would imagine 5 bucks American each, um, 8 bucks Canadian, and uh, 11.50 Canadian. What does that come to in in actual American? Probably like eight or nine bucks. So yeah, it's cheap. But 
I would even, I'm sorry, I, I hate having to say this because I do want to support the classics and stuff, but I would still say even at like uh, 12 bucks Canadian for both, wait for a sale. <laughs> wait for like a good sale too, yeah. like a 50% off sale to pay like 650 for both Canadian is reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not i'm not paying 12 bucks for these two no if i if i had it down to like a game like this or to go back a bit further in time and play say sorcerers get all the girls which is slightly more complicated and tedious i'd probably go back to something like that instead right um but oh okay uh i don't know any any final thoughts on less manly <laughs> well Man, okay, sorry, I, I gotta say, you know, <laughs> I'm looking at the box here, sorry to cut you off, okay. I, I just noticed something, I, I'm looking at the box here, um, the front cover box art, and um, <laughs> you remember the movie Mac and Me, that was totally supposed to <laughs> yeah. try to be E.T., but totally wasn't? I remember that. If you look at Les Manley's face on the cover, like, look it up right now, look up the Les Manley in Search of the King and find oh, the okay. box art. He is the Mac and Me Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> I gotta see this. And, 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 you know, and I get it, you know, we've already said he was the Kmart, the dollar store, but just the face he's making, he is <laughs> yeah. the Mac and Me Leisure Suit Larry. Oh, gosh, he totally is. He's even got a leisure suit on, dude. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> basically, like, I, I know it's supposed to be the Elvis suit, but oh, it's basically no. from what they show you, it might as well be a leisure suit. It's a but, leisure suit. <laughs> but that face he's making, I instantly just thought Mac and me. Wow. Yeah, that is funny. Do you remember how Mac looks? I'm just gonna unmack it. It's been a long time. Yeah, look, look it up. He, this yeah. is the, oh, <laughs> the eyes. Oh my God, exactly right. <laughs> the eyes and the mouth. Jesus, he is, th th it, and it's so appropriate. That is, oh, that is the perfect um, analogy for this game. I forgot all about this movie, man. I gotta get <laughs> Jacob to watch this one. Jeez. Yeah, th th this is the perfect analogy for this game. Um, Mac and <laughs> me is the ET as <laughs> as less manly is. This is to official. Lisa <laughs> Okay, so anyway, sorry, um, I, I cut you off there, but uh, final thoughts on Less Manly. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful game, and if you want to go back and play a game that's just nice to look at, has some beautiful backgrounds, and, and you don't mind a bit of moon logic because we have this wonderful thing called the internet, I <laughs> highly recommend paying half price <laughs> one of these days after you wishlist it and you get an email notification telling you it's a lot cheaper to go out and play this game. Mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't necessarily regret having played it just because, you know, <laughs> it, it gave us enough to talk about for an episode. Uh, and I played it well before we were even doing a podcast. But mm -hmm. uh, now I don't regret it, nor did I ever. But I also wouldn't say that I would, like, recommend <laughs> anybody do it. Well, like, if I, I like it. If I could go back, like two or three years to just before I was about to play it um, so I could convince myself one way or the other, I just wouldn't. I'd just be like, do whatever, <laughs> man. I don't, that, seriously, this is going to have very little effect on your life. Okay. You will neither regret it, nor will you be particularly glad that you did it. If it, okay, if it wasn't for me playing this when I was younger, I probably wouldn't have agreed to this podcast because I probably never would have heard this game. So there is that. But two, if I had never received it and never played it, the only thing that would change in my life is I wouldn't have gone out and bought the big box of Lost in LA only because I had played some of Search for the King. That is the only <laughs> impact that would happen in my life. Yeah. But uh, yeah. There, there is that for sure. Um, but I mean, even just emotionally, there is no impact on me. No, there is really only a memory of being disappointed. That's, <laughs> that's what it left me with. <laughs> Go in with low expectations. That's what I should have done, man. I, I, They were high. <laughs> all right. All right. So I think that's... Um, 
I think that's about as far as any of us can contribute to this conversation. Eh? <laughs> um, so, uh, I don't know. Did any of you out there play Less Manly and Search for the King? Uh, what did you think about it? Uh, good? Bad? Is there anything we forgot? Is there anything we got wrong, maybe? Uh, you know, hit us up. Let us know. Correct us. Agree with us. Disagree with us. As long as you talk to us, we're happy. So you can <laughs> um, you can tweet your hate at the CG Guild. You can uh, email us your hate at daylightclassicgamersguild.com. You can join the discussion on Facebook. Look up the Classic Gamers Guild. We have a page and a group um, where maybe don't hate us there because we are admins and we can ban you. Um, <laughs> we we post updates on Instagram, mostly just whenever our episodes go live. We do that on all our platforms. Um, so you can follow us there. And um, if you enjoy the show and want to support us, uh, please feel free on Patreon. Every dollar counts. Every $5 is better. $10 <laughs> is pretty awesome. All <laughs> I need to do is make about $4,000 a month and I can quit my job. Um, but yeah, um, otherwise, until next time, Anna, any final words? Save early, save often. And I guess I have to say, don't do a murder. 